nobody actually understands genetics. I get genuine brain damage whenever I hear people talk about it, when I hear it mentioned in my comments that, oh no, there's nothing you can do about hair loss, it's all genetics and blah blah. This is gonna be one of the most important videos on this channel as it lays the entire foundation for self-maximization. This really needs to get through people's skulls, okay? So, the thing about genes is that they need to be activated, they need to be triggered by their environment. Nobody is born to have acne, okay? People get acne because they have a genetic sensitivity to it that is triggered by their environment. And when people who have severe acne get on the right diet and fix certain lifestyle factors, it tends to completely reverse. Same thing for autoimmune issues. Nobody is born with an autoimmune issue. The body doesn't attack itself for no reason, just for fun. No, it's because your body is detecting that you are poisoning it with something that is unnatural and you have a genetic sensitivity to it. Therefore, you have autoimmune issues, right? A good example is Jordan Peterson and his daughter. For them, they are forced to be on a strict carnivore diet for the rest of their lives. Otherwise, those genes get triggered. Same thing for diabetes. A lot of people eat a shit ton of sugar, don't give a fuck. They never get diabetes, but some people do. Why? Because of genetics. However, the people who have diabetes, if they never ate like shit to begin with, if they just went on a carnivore diet, then they wouldn't have diabetes. It's impossible to have diabetes if you're on a strict carnivore diet. It's the same for smoking, right? We all intuitively understand that people who smoke and die from lung cancer is caused by their vice. And this is the crux of the argument really, because some people are gonna say, oh, but I know someone who smoked like a pack a day and lived until 120. Okay, that doesn't mean that the person who is genetically sensitive to lung cancer wouldn't have lived longer. Just because some people are genetically gifted and they can do whatever doesn't mean that you can't manipulate your environment to bridge the gap, duh. And even then, even if let's say you have good genetics, you would do even better if you didn't indulge in all of these different toxic behaviors that are considered normal nowadays, right? The guy who lived till 100 because he smoked a pack a day probably could have lived to 120 if he didn't. And it's the same thing with mental illness. A lot of people are prone to mental illness. However, they will all tell you that it took a specific trigger, a specific event in their life to trigger the mental pathology. Just because something runs in the family doesn't mean that you're a slave to your genetics and it's gonna happen to you no matter what and you're fucked, no. The idea is that when you have certain genes that are undesirable, you just prevent their expression. So why would it be any different with hair loss? Tell me. Why would it be any different with hair loss? Because you're not supposed to lose hair. No animal in the animal kingdom loses their hair like humans do prematurely, unless their environment is subpar. For example, zoo animals whose conditions of life haven't been recreated to what they are normally accustomed to naturally, or very, very rare genetic mutations. Now the issue with humans is that we we live in a very very toxic environment and it's very difficult to be 100% healthy. So you've got things that reduce the inflammation, that reduce the factors which trigger hair loss, but there are also things you can do to activate your positive genes, to speed up your hair growth, to extend the length of your hair growth cycle, the anagen phase. Because ultimately all hair loss is, is the lowering of the anagen phase and the broadening of the telogen phase. So, no matter what your genetics are, you can address the negatives, lowering scalp inflammation through things like getting enough sunlight, getting all the nutrients you need, eliminating all garbage foods, etc. And then you can supercharge 
your hair grow via things like hair mass, via things like blood flow, and a bunch of other things that work synergistically, all right? These people are so funny when they talk about genetics because think about language, right? We all have the genetic potential to speak, right? We all have the genetic potential to converse via words. However, if you take a child and you don't teach them language ever, then it doesn't matter what their genetic predisposition is, does it? They're just not going to speak, right? And what about growing taller? Well, if you give no food to a child that's growing, well, it's not gonna grow taller, right? You need input from the environment in order for those genes to activate. And when it comes to growing taller, sure, of course there's a genetic ceiling. Of course, some things are predetermined, but there's a difference in which height somebody is going to achieve if they eat no food, a bit of food, a lot of food, shit food, good food, etc. There's going to be a good amount of variance there. Not to mention factors like stress, factors like sunlight, all of those different things. And I could give so many different examples. Did you know that identical twins don't even lose their hair at the same rate? So if identical twins that both probably don't even know what the hell they're doing, still eating slops, still doing all the shitty habits and not doing any of the proper hair maxing practices, then what if there was a triplet that did everything right? That guy would not lose hair. It's that simple. Because you've already got twins who lose it at different rates. One is likely causing himself more hair loss triggers than the other twin, but that imaginary triplet, if he addresses all of the different triggers and creates positive triggers at the same time, then guess what? Hair loss stops. Hair starts regrowing. It's that simple. I've done it myself. You just need the right information, consistency, and faith. That's all there is to it. We live in an extremely toxic world filled with all sorts of diseases that did not even exist 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Hair loss has gone up significantly in the last 100 years. True things like hair products, true things like garbage nutrition, true things like heavy metal toxicity, toxic water, and I could go on and on and on. And there's always somebody who says, oh, but I tried this and I'm still losing hair, or I tried that and I'm still losing hair. It's like, well, yeah, there's multiple triggers that you have to address, and not everybody's trigger is the same. Some people are able to regrow hair just from quitting gluten, but for some other people, it's gonna take harsher dietary intervention. It's going to take rewiring more of their environment and it's going to take positive triggers as well. So there's two ways that you can go about it really. Either you tell yourself you're not going to be a victim of your genetics because at the end of the day the reason why you have the genes that you are is because of the habits of your ancestors, right? We all know this intuitively. The, those tribes in Africa where the motherfuckers are seven feet tall is because they drink a shit ton of raw milk during their development and consume raw meat and all these different things that are very, very good for high growth. So yes, over time, they get super fucking tall. The reason why you have the genes that you have is because of the habits of your ancestors. And guess what? You can play a part in your future genetics being improved if today you start improving all of those different habits. You're not clever for thinking that, oh, it's 100% genetics and you can't do anything. You're a victim. And that's incredibly pathetic. Like, I just don't see any point in accepting your fate, which is literally something you made up in your mind because you're unaware of the possibilities that you possess. Like, what is the point exactly? Because I don't think it's a life to just give up and to just rot and to just type this lazy slob that, oh yeah, it's all genetics, whatever, and discourage other people who actually want to improve their situation, right? All of this black pill knowledge should be something that serves you, should be something that you make use of to improve your life, to improve your situation, right? Crying on forums and getting upset over how unfair life is 
isn't gonna do anything. You are creating the worst possible reality for yourself by doing that. And I know what I'm talking about because I've been there. So what you need to do is to take the white pill. Use this knowledge, accept some of the harsher truths, understand that there are still other things that you can do. Epigenetics is very much a real thing you can leverage, for example. And just be the best you can be and let go of all that resentment. That shit almost ruined my life and I don't want it to be you. Every single piece of information that enters your head should be something that gets you closer to your higher self. A lot of people even say that the way my hair looks is because of genetics, but I've literally shown pictures of what it used to look like before I started doing real hair maxing, right? And do you seriously think that, w that I would bother doing all of this stuff, that I would bother stacking all of these habits and adhering to a strict protocol every day if I had super good genetics, if I wasn't losing my hair? Of course I wouldn't, right? Necessity is the mother of invention. At the end of the day, I'm not interested in being part of any kind of ideology I'm interested in the truth and the fact of the matter is that epigenetics are very much real. And here's the kicker, they're only as good as you make them to be. So yes, while genetics matter, you have a high degree of influence on the activation of said genes, both positive and negative. This is also why I believe that 99% of parents are abusers because through their ignorance, they make it so that their children develop all the terrible genes that they possess and they suppress the potential of their good genes via things like poor nutrition, horrible parenting, horrible programs that are put into their heads, all of those different things, right? It's so easy to program a child to be successful and attractive and happy if you actually know what you're doing. But most parents don't love their children enough to seek out that knowledge. It is what it is. Anyways, if you wanna know all of the triggers of hair loss and how to get rid of the negative ones while enhancing the positive ones, then everything you need to know is in the description. If you're still watching, I really appreciate you. Keep ascending.